asked us, we even asked us, he's like, if any, if, you know, if I kind of break the rules, just hit me up about it, guys, you know. Because, and I agree with him, like, we gain nothing. Like, one of these comes in, they talk nice. They're like, oh, look, white people deserve their space and can't we just be friends and blah, blah, blah. But then later that night, they're just behaviour. Yeah, you know, I think it was you, Comfy, that was speaking about that guy where he's like against the Jews and all. And then a half an hour later, he's posting, like, yeah, many big you can and just. Yeah. Oh, my red, my red gains. Yeah. Myron gains. The worst thing he said was, don't marry a girl until you're 35. What a yep. retardy thing. Yeah, say? what a idea. stupidest so, thing ever, mate. This is why we're talking. This is what, this is what we were saying yesterday. Like, yeah. at the end of the day, I like you. They're low impact yeah. role. Even if you know yeah. they say a few things that are based or whatever by our standards, don't for it. Don't think that they're <laughs> on our side. Oh, base. You know, it just yeah. doesn't happen. Just, you know what I mean, though. This is what, yeah. this is what people think. No, it's what yeah, but Myron like, Gaines. Like, oh, Myron Gaines. No, Myron Gaines. Like, 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 how many followers did Myron Gaines have? Just for fun. Like, like yeah. Oh, base. But that's the point. I think it's the only reason why some people listen to him is because he's a little bit known, but he's still a fuck. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And come the end of the day, come the end of the day, especially in somewhere like the States where there's just... Um, what you think these people are going to align, you think they're going to help you, they'll turn on you. As, as fast right? as a... Right. Yeah. They're yeah. 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 Welcome back to Breakdown Friday. Joseph Ward, Professor Carlton Jones, Patrick Irvin, and we're here breaking down a group of white guys telling the truth about how they feel about what we call sellout Negroes. Negroes who tap dance for the cause and the drum of white America. Negroes who go above and beyond to talk down and to trash and to punch down on black people whether they're American, Black, or Black people throughout the diaspora. Ne the diaspora, excuse me. Negroes who like to eat from the crumbs of the table of white America, especially white supremacists. Negroes who are sucking at the teeth of white America, just trying to get a little bit of drop out of it, just trying to get some recognition. And they are willing and able to pull their pants down and take a crap on their own people for their own self aggrandizement because they want white people to pet them on their heads and tell them that they've done a good job. They are the pets of white America, the William O'Neills. And well, the new, the new name is the Myron Gaines of the world because they called him out by name. And um, when I first heard this clip, I was like, wow, okay, they on Twitter getting it in, huh? They just roll and wreck it on, on Twitter, but then I'm listening to what they're saying. And they're basically saying they don't care about how much these black people sell out or how much these black people, uh, what they call the based N words. They don't care how based they are. At the end of the day, they're still N words. You're still not one of us. They still don't trust you. They still don't like you. No matter how hard you coon, no matter how hard you tap dance, they're telling you who you are and your place that you'll always be in. Like Trick Daddy said, no matter what, you still am what? You still an N-word. I'm saying N-word because I don't feel like doing all that editing, but you get it. But this is what we're breaking down because I, I just, this is, this is, it's the raw truth and we need to hear it and we need to discuss it. And black people need to understand what they're getting themselves into if you are thinking about trying to become a part of this talented tent trying to become a part of this boule, trying to become a part of this sector of black America that needs to have that proximity to white people. Because we're seeing it a lot in this election time, but those Negroes, those, um, those Negroes throughout the social media realms who do as much as they can to get the appreciation and the clamoring of the white audiences. Well, for all you Negroes, this is for you. Um, so let's jump right into this, man. Pat, you shared this audio in the group. Uh, how did you come about? How did you come uh, by this audio? Uh, what you think about it the first time you heard it? You had time to think about it. What other thoughts came to your mind? Just overall, and you know, they called Myron out by name. So what are your thoughts about this? Um, well, I came across it 
doing what I usually do. Y'all know I'm I'm a Reddit person. Like that's my social media of choice. And you always find juicy stuff scrolling through Reddit. And really the reason, and I'll say this, the reason I like Reddit is because it's long form content. Mm-hmm. People, it's, it's a part of the culture, the community of Reddit to take time to fully flesh out what you're thinking. It's not quick snippets. It's not nothing fast or whatever. Like people are typing out whole paragraphs about their thought processes and how they feel about particular subjects. And that always appeals to me. So um, this particular link was shared in another group that I'm a part of in Reddit. And uh, I saw it. And the very first thing that uh, I thought was, those aren't even American white people. Right. (laughs) (laughs) So... Like, that was my first thought, because, you know, everybody, especially in America, we love to paint this this picture as if, like, racism in America is, like, something... The top tier. Yeah, like, it's different anywhere else in the world you go. Like, you get get racism light in Europe or something. Right. And so it was just, like, enjoyable. And I I know that people are going to say, you saying it's enjoyable? Yeah, it was enjoyable to, uh, to be able to see that you know what i'm saying this isn't this is like this is proof that is nationwide and it's on your side what well, racism is a global phenomenon how many times right. did the master teachers have to tell us how, how, how many ways do they have to say it white supremacy is a global phenomenon white supremacy started in europe i mean you know, the, uh, what was it? The first people to engage in the slave trade was the Portuguese, right? I'm just saying. So, I mean, I think it it just, it was that. So then thoughts shifted to um, the terminology low IQ, which is something that Myron mm-hmm. uses a lot. So I know mm-hmm. he's intimately familiar with the group <laughs> that is discussing him. At that moment, he's probably had some interactions with several members of that group. And I believe the name of that group was Whites on yeah, Whites Only. Yeah. Right. Whites only. And to be clear, white people ain't stupid. They know that black people are in those groups. I used to be in those groups um under alias. So in that sense, there was nothing really new about what was presented. Like I said, I, I used to be in those groups when I was into social media. So I know those groups exist, um, but it was just it was it was interesting to see it the way it was presented. I think there's a lot for Black people that are serious that are really lost and in the dark about global white supremacy and racism. There's a lot in this little short clip that they probably need help processing. Um, so in that, I would encourage them to find uh, a professional that can help them make sense of this. Because this is if this video if this clip goes viral, it's a it's a it's a Negro wake up call for a lot of people that's been resisting the other ones, Boy. and they need help getting through that. Uh, because a Negro wake up call goes two ways: either you wake up or you double down. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm if, if if you all are lost about who Myron Gaines is, check this out. I'm still alive. Okay, yeah, so I don't want guys. Yeah, I don't want, I don't want to. Some guys are different about it. Like uh, some dudes are like, "Yeah, it's gonna be funny." Eskimo Brothers is for a funny yeah, story. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, and then some guys are like, "Hell, you know." I've noticed with black dudes, they don't like doing that. White guys, we're all like, "Yeah, well," uh, I said, "We." Yeah, he's, white. Yeah, he's, he's white. white. He's white, Justin. Uh, See, he's white, hey, bro. Hey, hey man. That was uh, natural. That was natural. <laughs> I officially just stamped Myron as white. Yeah. <laughs> What I meant to say, what I meant to say was, when I was in college, oh, yeah, I knew that. Was- so, so Myron Gaines is one of the co-hosts of the Fresh and Fit podcast. He, the other lame one, and um, you know, he has a my they they called him out by name, but he is a representation of the sellout Negro and that sellout Negro mindset. So when we're saying Myron. We are talking about him, but we're also using him as a representation of the sellout Negro mindset as a whole. So from now on, you know, a new name in the lexicon of the sellouts is you admiring. 
So if your name is Myron, you better spell it different from him or just be better. No. So, <laughs> uh, and sorry, sorry if your name is Myron. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at Myron Gaines of Fresh and Fit. So take your anger out on him. So um, PC, man, um, what do you think about this? Like, um, I know you, like me, were introduced to this through Pat. But when you saw this and, and you having time to either seeing it for the first time or having time to process, like, what were your thoughts about this whole clip? I was because I ain't gonna lie, I'm real interested in what you got to say. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> That's why I landed because I'm yeah. interested too. Oh damn, there's a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all, right. <laughs> all right. So, well, first of all, um, I, I saw the clip. So this is not this is like my second time seeing it because I did see it in the group. Mm -hmm. And Pat brought up a good point about the fact that these weren't even American. You know, you could tell that they had like a, a Irish like sort of Australian type, uh, Australian Irish. It, you know, it's all sound. Uh, well, I ain't gonna say that, but anyway, <laughs> you know what I was about to say. Um, <laughs> it ain't like us. So when I first heard it, I just thought I thought mine deserved this. He earned this because he's been trying to cozy up to people like Nick Fuentes. He's been going around wearing. Um, clan uh regalia yeah. on his shows and walking around with hoods on with and, and basically being as as, as of offensive as possible to the black community yes and, and and let's be clear on something else like well, for, well I'll, i'm gonna walk this down i i watched the jordan uh, the the um, what's the kid named Jordan Davis that got murdered in Florida? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so after that, you know, that came like maybe a year or so after the 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 news footage actually came a year or so after the Trayvon Martin case. So it was the next biggest case, and I found that uh, there was a Jewish news writer. Well, he was he was. Uh, NBC correspondent, uh, MSNBC correspondent. And he said, y'all really don't know. And he's talking to a group of black people on the panel. Y'all really don't know how white people really feel about y'all. Right. But when I go into a room, if there's one black person in the room, the conversation's different. But as soon as the black people leave out, he said, all white people do is talk about black people and the consumption that how consumed they are with black people. And it's always negative, but there's a consumption that they have in regards to our culture, in regards to our likeness, whatever you want to call it. So and I had known that because I went to college in, 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 in Bloomsburg, uh, North Central Pennsylvania, Bloomsburg University. So. I saw that firsthand because especially in college, a lot of white people feel like they don't have to bite their tongue and they feel liberated to say whatever they want. And it don't even matter who's in the room at that particular time. As long as there's more of them than it is you, then and you found this out in the classrooms where they felt protected by the professors. So I'm not, this is not a new phenomenon. I mean, we all know it. This is not a new phenomenon. What I find really interesting about it, though, is that we will seem to have these situations where black people are reminded about the about how dominant society feels about us, whether it's here or internationally. And two or three years later, it's like a new group of Negroes come through and try to reinvent or recreate mm -hmm. this dynamic. I remember having this conversation with my nephew who had uh, just got out of college. He was still in college at the time, and he was telling me about how times are different now. They don't have to deal with racism like we did before. Yeah, yeah, and I had to yeah. explain to him, I said, nephew, I need you to understand something. This is cyclical. Every some, some odd years, we have a group of new young Negroes who feel as though just because you're friends with somebody who does not look like you, that racism has finally, there's no longer a conversation. I said, this is cool until y'all have to get out there in the real world and compete for resources. That's when it all starts to change. When you have to start competing with them for the ability to provide for yourself and it's you versus them for a job. 
you know, mm-hmm. out here in the, in the real world. And so this is something that happens a lot when, especially when you have, I'm not going to say that. This happens a lot when you have people who just don't want to fight no more. And, but, and we can go back to like the international piece. And I'm glad you brought that up, Pat, because the first thing I thought about was when they had the Winter Olympics in Russia a few years ago. And they had to warn all the black people not to leave Olympic Village because mm-hmm. of the white supremacist groups that they had out there and the white nationalist groups they had out there who were actively talking about harming them if they encountered any of them in the city of St. Petersburg or in, or Moscow or anywhere else they were they planned on going. We don't be so, paying attention. We don't pay attention to what goes on in Europe. So that's why we don't know. No. We don't think like men. That too. Because as a man, the first thing you do when you enter a situation is you, you run a threat analysis. Mm. You know, and we and we actually check to see to see if there's going to be danger here. Is this somebody I need to be concerned about? Is this situation even safe? And we take all that into consideration. The problem is the majority of the black community are all strong black women, even the ones with male genitalia. So I, I just did it. Um, I had a crump oh, moment. Man, crump. I tell you, <laughs> I, I just crumped it. My bad. I'm making up all new words over here. <laughs> Dramatize. So, uh, <laughs> but the most interesting, the most interesting part about this, Myron ain't even black. He's mm-hmm. Arab. Like a hundred percent Arab. Yeah, he's Sudanese. Yeah, so like his Sudanese brothers actually put him on blast for disrespecting uh, his 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 Islamic heritage. So Myron ain't even black, but he does this stuff because he's dark skinned and he can blend in and he can you he can, I mean shit. If it works for to if it can get you close to the White House. You know he can do this type of stuff where he is right now on his uh on his platform. Myron ain't black. Myron gets to hide, and I I call out the cast that allow him to walk around using the n word all the time because it's one of those things where black people have not shown enough cultural pride to call people out when they do this, and if, especially right. if you if you don't identify as black. We really shouldn't be doing it anyway, but damn it, <laughs> you know, to allow somebody else to do it is the ultimate res- disrespect. Mm-hmm. My room, like, and Tommy sort of my other sort of like gotten close to those guys too, and he just got called out by Richard Spencer. Yeah, and Richard Spencer said to him, "How can I trust you to be loyal to me when you're not even loyal to the people you came from?" Hey man, they I, I saw prior to this, I saw another Twitter space where the white guys was going in on Tommy Sotomayor. And he was in the Twitter space and they go in there basically telling the same thing. Like, you yeah. a sellout Negro. We don't respect you. Go crawl back into your hole. And that's the bit, and that's the biggest part. They don't respect you. And Negroes feel like feel like the Benedict Arnold. Or what's the humpback that that sold out? Yeah, uh, yeah, no, three hundred. Uh, yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. They feel like if I just get to the other side, because now I what I find about these Negroes is the ones that, that that desire to be in that space is they got hurt feelings towards the rest of the black community. Oh, absolutely. And mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because they have those hurt feelings towards the rest of the black community, they want to see us pain. They want to see us in pain. And they want to join the ones they feel like can, can inflict the most harm upon us. And like I said, Myron ain't black, but he's been hanging around a bunch of Negroes down there in Florida. Um, damn, y'all gonna have to catch that L too, huh? Man, um, it's, it, it, bro, it's Florida. We come on, man. We expect it. It's Florida. <laughs> yeah, I got a stray for that one. <laughs> we 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 catch strays every day. We 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 know. So 
But that's I think that's the biggest part. The biggest part is they feel as though they're inflicting harm on a community that they have uh that that they have a lot of ill regard towards. Meanwhile, the people they're doing it for don't have any respect for them because they said if you were really about something, you wouldn't be turning on your own to side with us. What what but but why not do it when you could just take the Candace Owens route and after white people reject you, you just start giving black people platforms and doing stuff with black people because black people gonna say that you can't, you're not welcome back, but you welcome back. Well, black people, like I said, <laughs> we are all raised with like women. And so, I mean, how... How many women have you seen? They know their man is a philanderer. Like, this dude is out here everywhere. And yet and still, they said, as long as he come back to me, I don't care. That is the black community. The black community don't care because it's like, we, we talk about, uh, what is it? Um, the syndrome when, when, when you, when you uh, want to stock on. Stockholm syndrome, right? Like the bank was held up in that bank, and they fell in love with the the bank robbers. We don't have Stockholm syndrome. I've often said we have abused dog syndrome, where you can abuse a dog, you could light his ass on fire, but as long as you keep feeding him, that dog is going to come back to you and hoping to win you over in your admiration. You pat that dog on the head one or two times, that dog will bite somebody's head off for you. That's like. Feeding a dog collard greens. Right, that's black people, man. We we just love we, we for some strange reason we are the the people that you know you heard the people. Oh, we just want our voices heard. Heard by who? Who do you want to hear you? You know, it's it's sick and it's sad, but you know, I'm laying right there, right? <laughs> they want they want to be heard because they want to be made to feel good. Because hey, that's all we've had. Because remember, Maya Angelou told us it's not what they say it's how somebody make you feel that people remember so the feeling is the most important and if feelings matter to us then feelings have to matter to white people so if we appeal to their feelings then they will feel like oh we shouldn't treat black people like this anymore we've treated black people like this for too long now it's time for us to change and be good to black people. How about that, Bobby? How about that, Bubba? Yeah. And that's not happening. No, nah, it's not. Uh, what's happening is more disdain and hatred is built up. It's like, if I'm going, if somebody, if I know you're my mortal enemy, but I, my validation comes from how strong you are. Because when I defeat you, I want the world to know that I'm actually this, that, and the other. And you start throwing the fight i'm kind of mad about that if i'm fighting you you know i'm I'm a, I'm a gladiator i'm a warrior i'm kind of mad about that i want the best because i want to beat you at your best i don't want to hear shit later about how you well you know i took it easy no 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 so as these white supremacists who all try to carry this celtic sort of uh honor and whatever they don't respect an adversary that will fight back. Nobody respects losers. Nobody does. Losers don't even respect themselves. Yeah. Right. And so that. and so you are you will always be stepped on. You will always be disrespected. You will always be on the bottom. We will always talk down on you. We will always punch down on you. Because let's let's be real. My people like Myron, Candace Owens, Officer Tatum, all these other black people who Take the time, Thomas Sowell, uh, Larry Elder, who take the time, Thomas Sotomayor, who take the time to just go in on black people, okay? and then they don't have no smoke for white people. They are all the the low self esteem, the 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 black people who hate their blackness. These are the black people who are looking for white people to just once again pat them on their head and tell them that they've done good. But the white people don't respect them. Why would I respect a sellout? If I am the most, look, I'm, white supremacy is the most dominant force on this planet. Why would it respect weakness? Why? It, look, how, look, how, look at the relationship 
that white supremacy has with China or the Asians and look at the relationship that they have with Africans and tell me which one is a, is a relationship that has respect embedded within it. Well, wait, Joe. Yeah, you can't talk about Candace Owens like that. Why? Because you like her hair. Didn't you say that was your future baby mm -hmm. mama? Well, the white dude beat me to it, so that show you what she mm -hmm. had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I went mm -hmm. fast. I went fast enough. Maybe maybe I was maybe I was doing too much Negro stuff. I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's funny though, like and this is where I say black people, we got to understand like how hard it is to do what we're trying to do. And that's just why I say we got to we got to really understand this and take it seriously. Human instinct, human desire, survival traits, all of this stuff dictates that you pair with the strongest person culturally as well. You link up, you do whatever you can to get on their good side because that increases your chances of surviving. Hmm. As black people, we have to resist that urge in order to do what we need to do. And that requires a level of intellect and a level of strength to be able to look at ourselves and say, I know every fiber of my being is telling me that if I just learn to play nice with these people, because they have all of the power, my life will be better. That's like that's emotion. You know what I'm saying? And my my Angela, right? That's that's emotion. The logic, though, the look at look at the history of it. Everybody that cozies up and decides to try that strategy, it never works out for them. So obviously, that strategy is not working. I mean, the Native Americans tried it. You see, you see what how that ended up for them. <laughs> <laughs> and they were civilized. That's that's our future. The the most successful people we've had at it were the uh the Chinese. The, but you you saw as soon as uh what did Trump call it the Kung Flu, you saw how quickly all of that just all of that whole model minority they wrote books about how the Asian Americans, Japanese, Chinese, all of these different groups fought to be seen as the model minority in America. This, that was their plan to play nice and cozy up next to white people. And you saw all it took was one illness to erase all but, of that. But they had they had to have an Asian hate crime bill implemented as well. But it, so black people, this is why this is not because this, this is a fact. So power. Say, power. What what we, we really need y'all, and this is why I go so hard. It ain't that I'm attacking black people. It's really like, no, we need to open our eyes and understand what we're dealing with. You the things that you think, the intuitive things are not successful. You got to be counterintuitive. The things that seem like they make sense, they don't work because they seem like they make sense when you're interacting with the people that think and act like you do. When they don't, you got to observe the context. What's the context here? The context is white people are insulated and enamored with themselves. And they believe they have, PC says it all the time, divine mandate, heaven's mandate. Mm -hmm. They believe that they are righteous in the what they do. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and you are never going to be them. So trying to get close to them might buy you a little bit of time. But really, all it does is turn you into 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 a monkey at the circus. Mm -hmm. And the moment you don't jump through the hoop, something gonna jump through you. It, I, that's that's I, uh, Ip Man Four, the movie Ip Man Four. That was kind of like the theme in Ip Man Four. Like the Chinese were doing their best to assimilate into European culture, into white culture, and white people would treat them bad. White people were literally punching down, literally abusing them until they say, you know what? We're not doing this no more. We're not standing there. And they stood up and they started kicking ass. Oh, yeah. They, that, they, were tired, they were tired of that sweet potato. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But but the idea is, so for black people, the idea is the closer we get to whiteness, as you said, Pat, the closer we get to whiteness, the more successful we'll be. And they're not understanding, okay, if you're looking at a model of where well, the other groups have done this, right, 
if we take the Asians, the Chinese, the Chinese who come to America, they come from a power base already. They come from power. They come from a country. They come from backing. They integrate into American society. For the most part, they don't assimilate. They integrate because they already have a culture. They already have a plan. They already have their own stuff that they already own. You have some who assimilate into white culture, but for the most part, they're integrating. But remember, they already come from a power base. People like Myron, you're trying to assimilate because you are looking for a power base and that power base don't like your black behind. All of you sell out Negroes, they don't like you. You are a pet. Look up what a pet is. You, Some of you have pets. Look at how you treat your pets. That's how they treat you. You're insignificant until they don't, especially you're, you're totally insignificant. They use you and when they don't need you anymore, they throw you away. You're, di you're disposable. You're not, not even dispensable. You're disposable. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, you know, and, well, white folk have figured out this, that they've used black people for trial and error. The whole concept of the talented tenth and the creation of the boule as a buffer group got literally Negroes are competing to become a token. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you have a bastion Negro. Like, if you have one black person and they're working at a particular job, the talented tenth. There you go. <laughs> right. If you have one black person and they're working at a, a corporate job and another black person gets hired, the person that gives that black person the hardest time is the one that was there before them because they know the dynamics and they already know it's only room for one nigga on this <laughs> Right. right. <laughs> and then, now it's blood sport. Yeah. You know, they start sabotaging them. They, ain't, they, they don't let them know what time the meeting is and you know, they they tell them at the last minute you have a project that's due seven a.m. and it's like six it's like six o'clock at night and you have to go through a, a eight hundred page document and out. They will do the dirtiest stuff to each other, and this is this is the 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 mindset of a people who have already been de defeated. And I know, and, and let's clear something up too, because. I'm tired of you Negroes who conveniently become a black nationalist when the, the problems and situations don't serve you. You know, all these cats always talk this. I remember when, when was this, Clarence Thomas, when he was running for Supreme Court justice, and everybody knows his black, and they should know his background now. He was a Panther, uh, at least he wanted to be a Panther. He considered himself to be a black activist, this, that, and the other, until he became a judge. And then a lot of that stuff changed. And when the whole con the whole controversy came up with him and Anita Hill <clears throat> in regards to him allegedly being sexually inappropriate with her, the first thing he did was get on the mic when at the hearing and say, I'm being discriminated against because I'm a black man trying to assume this role in the Supreme Court as a Supreme Court justice. And even the Senate members of the Senate that was going to vote for him started saying, just because you accuse me of being a racist, I'm going to, I'm going to vote nay when it comes to uh, affirming you. He got affirmed anyway, as we know. And then look at what he did with it. You know, he become the most white supremacist uh, version. What, what's this kid we talking about? <laughs> Myron Gaines. He's become the, the Myron Gaines of the Supreme Court. <laughs> but, it, but, 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 a lot of those black people, ask yourself, you sell out Negroes, ask yourself, why does the system of white supremacy need you? Like, And be honest with yourself. Why do they need you? You are a flea on the testicle of white supremacy. Why do they need you? To do what? That they can't do by themselves. Well, that's where, and see, that question is an interesting question, and I don't know if we really want to get into it here. But that's where you get a lot of the uh, a lot of the pseudoscience and a lot of the other things. And I'm not saying there's not some merit to some of that stuff. But there, there, it's almost always in conversation taken in the context that removes the inherent credibility of the argument. You know, where you have people saying, "Well, 
they need the, they need the melanin from our black skin to sustain their race. And you say, okay. And the best way they could get that is the world that they've created. So, so, so what about the European countries that are like totally white? Oh, they, they, they're definitely facing genetic um, decline. But they're those- still here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but so there's some, there's some, Lot, there's some proof to that, some truth to that, but not the way Negroes see it. So it, being being in white spaces don't save you, but the replenishing of their bloodline every some, every so often. That's why you see every 40, 50 years, a bunch of white men with black women because they know that they're going to have white, you know, mixed children, and then they're going to f- fence those children off to side those children off to, to whites and eventually they they lose the genetic what is it the uh the the genetic mar- well they don't lose the genetic markers but they lose the physical traits of being uh with black people over a series, uh over a certain amount of time so I think it's three generations. Um so there's that part to it. But the assimilation concept of it all, of saying that they need us for that? Nah. And if you look every day, there are thousands of black children that come up missing. Easy to extract melanin from them. So if I'm when, white. Go ahead, go ahead. My bad. No, no, go ahead. If I'm white and I want to stay around, I can I can. And I I I we all learn what you said, we all know that. We all know that information. Have a proof fence, yeah. but you know, I can, I could, I can make with the Arabs, I can make with the Chinese, I can make with other groups of melanated people and still stick around. We don't need you all, and they do that. Um, white men have been doing that, like the whole. See, we, a we whole bunch of Indo Asians. Listen, and the they, we do we talking about passport bros, two thousand twenty. They were doing that in the eighties and the nineties. That's where you get the Keanu Reeves from and all those other. We can make a uh, whole bunch of Kardashians. You know, th- yeah. So you you they they've been doing that for, for a minute. So or we can let a whole bunch of Hispanics in. Right. See, but and here's the here's the thing out because PC brings up a like like I said, there's some merit to some of these arguments. But not in the way that they're being argued. We all know that uh, if you if you if you engage in severe inbreeding and incest, there's going to be a problem with your genetic line. You yeah. you need new genetic material like that. That is a, 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 a genetic defense mechanism to propagate the survival of the species. So we do know that from time to time, people need to uh, people need to marry out we'll say that right but does that mean what we think it means when we're having these conversations about the necessity and i understand for all you people that are like geneticists and all that other stuff (laughs) i understand i'm making a point i'm not trying to get down into the minutiae of the argument i understand that when we're talking about um that kind of thing we're talking about severe incest where brothers and sisters are mating with each other for an extended period of time what i'm talking about though is the concept of needing to provide new genetic material because that is the core of the argument that a lot of people make and so then if that's what we're talking about then the conversation becomes one of okay why do you think that black people are the only place that they can get that new genetic material why do you think that it is melanin specifically that is required and what is it about our melanin because let's also remember white people are melanated there's a difference between a white person and an albino they look different so yes. white people have melanin but yes. it's different so yes. what is it and so what? i'm not even saying there aren't viable answers to these questions i'm saying if you're having that conversation and you don't know the answers to these questions then we're not having that conversation. Well, remember, they 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 are regurgitating information that they've heard and learned from Afrocentric scholars, predominantly or only. And a lot of people haven't studied outside of that that realm because you know I was reading a book 
Darkness Matters by three black doctors who were talking about the difference between the neuromelanin and how a white person can have more neuromelanin than a dark skinned black person. Yeah. You know, so yeah. But if you're not if you're not studying outside of that box and outside of that realm, because we under once again, we understand why our scholars taught the information the way they taught. They wanted to help us build up our pride and our self-esteem. But they also told us to go study everything so we can learn the full picture. And we didn't. Yeah. yeah. We never do. A lot of the opinions we have are based on the cat on the titles. I remember when we used to be in a certain group that shall not be named. Uh, Patrick used to say something like, uh, it was a response, well, I didn't read the article, but let me tell you what the title thing, what I think about the title. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that <laughs> that was hilarious to me whenever I would see that because I think the, the majority of people did the same thing. They just didn't say that. You know, mm-hmm. this is this is we we've become dumbed down. Yep. In in terms of how we deal with things, things need to be extreme, like modified and simplified. It's as if you have to talk to a child. And even if you talk to the child, you have to expect the same type of response that a child would give you. And that's where we're struggling at. We're having these high level conversations. I'm reading in the comments. uh, Oh, this is a juvenile conversation. Uh, These guys are not this, that and the other. But, you know, it's easy to throw that out. But you never see anybody articulate why. You know, articulate, and that's the that's the frustration of having these conversations, because if we we are really, and I'm not trying to insult nobody, the conversations us three have on the phone are ten times in terms of the level of sophistication, analysis, and breakdown than we do here on Fridays. And but we have to say it this way because we have to deliver the bite-sized chunks that hopefully people will understand to be able to comprehend. I always talk about Bloom's taxonomy and how it relates to a level of comprehension we have and the ability to uh, understand and the ability we have to, to deal with information. And the we get stuck. There's a knowledge level where it's basically you just know the word and the comprehension, you know, the definition and the comprehension where you understand how to use the word in a sentence. We get stuck between those two areas. We never get to the point where we have uh, proper analysis and then we can actually apply the information to anything we know. We don't have a chance. Uh, uh, we don't, we're not, we're not uh, at the point where we can actually synthesize it or, and evaluate the process. We don't get to that point because we get stuck on that first level. And the first level we get stuck on is because we become highly emotional about things we don't really understand. And so the second somebody speaks to it, it speaks to us and in a point or, or speaks to us on a level of uh, comprehension that we don't have. Instead of saying, damn, I don't know. Can you teach me more? It's we get we become combative. And we become dismissive because we don't understand what the hell they're talking about, even though what they're talking about is something that could save our lives. Hey, that understanding, that misunderstanding, rather, spills over into our misunderstanding of the system of white supremacy and why black people try so hard to get close to it, to be next to it, to be a part of it, to benefit from it, to to have white people recognize them and know their names and be in the realms of white people and just and just get this love. That's that lack of understanding. You, you are my enemy. We are enemies. The mongoose and the snake ain't trying to be friends. The hyena and the lion ain't trying to be friends. And they're animals, lower conscious level animals. But somehow they get it, but somehow we don't get it. Somehow... Yeah. Somehow we want to be in thy number, <laughs> like the song say with the white people. We want to be, we want to be hand in hand with white people. You hear, you hear a young Martin Luther King give a speech, and we run with it. Forget everything else he said after that. We hear a young Martin Luther King give a speech, and we run with it. That's the only thing they keep being reinforced. We have to become this melting pot. This, this is not a melting pot. This is white domination. 
every other group of people that's coming to America is jockeying for a position except black people. The Hispanics ain't playing with us and the Asians ain't playing with us. Y'all keep talking about this black and brown alliance. The Browns ain't aligning with the blacks. The Browns aligning with the Browns and getting their stuff together. But even with the Melton's pot analogy, right? Like, it's funny because when you really like who you are, the idea of becoming something other than what you are is not a positive idea. Right. So, and you know, the dominant flavor in the melting pot don't have a problem being in the melting pot. Because I'm going to retain my identity. All of you, you know have to saying? change. You have to change right. to, to, to make me happy. Y'all, I'm going to take a little bit of you and a little bit of you. I'm going to merge some of y'all in. The best of you that I like. So for white people, you know, I'm, I'm going to take your rhythm, black folk, because I like your rhythm. It's cute when you do it. I won't be able to do that, too. I'm going to take your athleticism because it's cute when you can jump over this and do that. I'm going to take those things from you, but I'm going to remain me in the melting pot. So I like the melting pot analysis analogy as a white person, which is why I'm going to push it. As a black person, what the f*** about being in a melting pot is enjoyable to you? Right. My fault, Joe. Nah, what, you but, you what, like, what, what is it about being in the melting pot that is enjoyable to you as a black person that makes you say, yeah, I want some of that? What is it about yourself that you are willing to give up to become what? more of this other thing to fit in? Another, another example is this younger generation and how they cling to Japanese culture through their love of am anime or how they praise Japanese culture, how they lust out the Japanese culture through their love of anime, right? Because to them, this culture is better than mine. When I look at my culture, when I look yeah. at my people, when I look at blackness, blackness is ghetto. It's ratchet. It's inferior. It's not something that I'm proud of. So Japanese coach, hey, the Japanese, like I'm like people have to study other people's culture. The idea of our culture and American culture and, and Western culture, we're the only ones that have like horrible things that go on with our culture, and people not really understanding the breadth of human beings. Human beings have always been about domination and supremacy that has been the human story the good guy the bad guy from the beginning fighting for supremacy and domination human beings have always done that our modern form of that now is the asians working their way up bricks getting put together all these different factions being put together to challenge white supremacy because everybody's jockeying for power. The Crusades, all these things. It's not new. The new, the new, what what's also not new is Myron Gaines type people who think that, hey, if I just turn my back on my own culture, because hell, we losing. If I turn my back on mine, I could get a part of yours and then that'd be better for me. No, you a booger and they rolled you up and flicked you off. They don't need you. They'll use you. They'll use you to help get further, but they don't need you. Wake up. Well, I have three things. Like, first, like I, I keep going back, because Myron ain't black. Myron's Arab, and, if, and Arabs have had, have had a, a, a dominant sort of relationship over the black community, and even in Africa. They have a disdain for the Africans in Africa. We've got to remember, before the transatlantic slave trade, there was the trans, uh, what was it, uh, Saharan? What was it? Uh, yeah, uh, trans, uh, trans Saharan slave trade in the East, yeah. the, that East African slave trade, too. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I do have a question, though, for you. Why yes. you why you on that? Um, do you think the darker skin or black Arabs get treated different than the white Arabs? Yeah, I do. Like they have their racism with them within themselves. But when they come to America, their driver's license says white. <laughs> you know, 
they and, and many of them don't fight it. You know, they they don't they don't fight that. So I give you that. I, I give you that part. Well, I, I, well, I, I asked that because that, it's like, okay, you are you would be considered a black Arab or a dark skinned Arab, and the white Arabs will look down on you. So you're taking the opportunity to punch down because you would you want to be a part of not only the white Arab system but the white supremacy system and the white European system. Oh yeah, he's definitely you know shooting his shot. Yeah. Um, so, but to get back to the point you were really trying to make that you you've been making this this whole this whole session, this whole video. Black people, Negroes, are the the ones that want to join in this 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 system, the one be a part of it. They are the uninvited guests to a party. They're the uninvited guests to a party. Uh, the party crashes in the gall of white supremacy. And the only time they get to stay is if they perform some type of service. It's like the main mission that they, the, the main mission policies have been extended to allow this Negro to stay in our company as white folk would say. So if you have, if you're not entertaining them, you're not profiting them and you're not serving them, then that's when, and, and, and even when you do, and once you've done it to the point where they no longer need you, as it was said earlier, <laughs> they can cast you aside. You become a castaway, a cast off. And for some strange reason, Negroes can see this consistently in history and think that there is not going to happen to them. <laughs> Sound for me. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not going to happen to me. It's different. Times have changed. We're no longer dealing. We're in a post-racial society and all this other BS until it happens to them. Right. And then as soon as it happens, you'd be like, like Amarosa or somebody out there talking about how racist it was to be in that situation, how impressive it was to be in that situation. But the whole time you was trying to be in that situation. Mm -hmm. And so I see it and I, and I see the work. I see it in the world. People go out of their way to walk on eggshells around white folk. Mm -hmm. Make you feel comfortable. And it's amazing to me that in the time and place where we supposedly have leg legislation and policy in place that's supposed to be protective of protected classes of people, i.e. black people, the black people are the ones that walk around most afraid to, to, to stand on business. But I see it all the time. And I see even around other black people, you got to be careful about what you say about white people around other black people. Don't you say that about Mouser. They, they will, they will, they will report you for being racist. I've had that in my classroom, classroom full of black women. Next thing you know, I'm getting a call. Hey, somebody said you said something that was racist. I was in Mississippi telling them about how they need to stop bending the knee. And how, you know, we need to have black owned this, that, and the other, black run this, this, that, and the other. And the next morning I got up and they said, as soon as you left, all the people in the room were talking about how racist you were to white people. Hey, you went to Mississippi. <laughs> that was many moons ago. We so, told you. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Y'all ain't got shit on, on Mississippi, Florida. Y'all ain't got nothing on Mississippi. We crazy, but, but we ain't that backwards. <laughs> so, um, but the bottom line is, man, when it comes down to it, I think the I think this this is one of those things where we might have reached escape philosophy philosophy. Blah, 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 blah. Damn, Crump, we might have might have <laughs> we might have gotten into crumping. escape hey. velocity. Yeah, I'm crumping up in here. <laughs> yeah. In terms of trying to writing this, because each generation. The further we go on, the less race loyal the generations have become because they're not being raised in a race loyal household. They're not even being really raised in a household. They're being maintained in a household. Their food is on the table. They got clothes on their back, a roof over their head. But their parents are even telling them 
to to go out there and do whatever. You don't have to be loyal to this because their parents aren't loyal to it. Let's be real about this. The majority, man, we look at those pictures of the civil rights movement. We look at the pictures of black national movement. Man, do you realize that you can put all of that into, like, if you really wanted to be serious about into like an hour long movie and cover the entire damn movement? In terms of how many black people were actually active and participatory and and actually supported it, mm-hmm. you you got you got literally literally. And I'm telling y'all, that's why I always say only one percent of the black community actually wants to be free. And yeah, I'm in the nationalist. Like one percent of the nationalist community wants to be free. The rest what? of them are so comfortable. I can what? go home. I got air conditioning. I got heat. I got running water. I got plumbing. Uh, I'm. I can go to the movies when I want. I'm cool. This is a hobby to them. What year did Malcolm do the field Negro in the House Negro speech? I think it was '62. Might have been '62, '63. Either way, long time ago. But what he articulated was on point. It's a lot of Negroes that want to be in that house. They are fighting to be in the house. And when you get into the house, now remember, you do got Negro responsibilities now. Like you can, you can, uh, they'll give you like special little tasks and special little jobs, but you still got to remind yourself who you are and where you are in this hierarchy. You little, you little chocolate drop. You got to remember that now. Chocolate You're not who you think. <laughs> You're not who you think you are. Right? right. But it's the mindset of the house Negro to think that, okay, well, since they've let me in, they have to like me. I've got to be one of them. I've got to be down. No, mm-hmm. no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad those white boys accurately articulated exactly how they were feeling. So you Negroes can stop lying to yourselves. Matter of fact, yes. I've been seeing a couple of videos these last couple of weeks of both black men and women who have been clamoring for white people get their Negro wake up calls. And I will say this, all you Republican black Negroes who out there clamoring for these white folk, for these Republicans ain't did nothing for us either. Republicans, just like the Democrats, Republicans ain't done nothing real quick. And that black lady that been making the rounds that that gave that stirring speech for the the, uh, Republicans that was called not Kamala and all the other ones, look, we're not saying y'all lying, but what we are saying is it's very cringe to see how y'all clamoring for a party that ain't gonna do nothing for you either. That's all we are saying. Yeah, it's it's disingenuous, and I blame Brandy because she the made the ga- yes. You know, Negroes need a theme song. Oh, almost don't count. No, I want to be down. I, I want to be down. <laughs> and I blame because you know you you think. Man, look, it's it's like this. Uh, PC's right. We need a critical mass. The difficult part is fine. And, and I know you've said it as well, Joe. We've all said it. But people forget, right? It, it was three, three or four reporters took down the Catholic Church. They just mm-hmm. need a small group of people dedicated to doing the work. Uh, well, I won't say took down the church, but, you know, exposed the shenanigans that severely rocked the church, right? All we need is a small group of people that are serious about doing the work. Unfortunately, that small group of people has to be a large group of people in terms of micro numbers. But in mm-hmm. terms of the macro scale, you don't need, you know, 10,000 black folk could really do a lot of damage if they were focused and dedicated in America. The problem with us is that we can only find maybe a dozen at a time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I like we won't talk about the way the system is designed. It's designed that way. That, that's why they're not worried about you as an individual. Ain't nobody <laughs> checking for you. I don't care how whatever, whatever you think you are. They're not checking for you. They can start checking for you when a group of y'all click up. But they still ain't really doing nothing. They just watching. Because it ain't no need to do nothing. It ain't no need to do nothing. So, And I say this because there are a lot of paranoid people out there that think because you made a Facebook post, the FBI is going to blow up your house. It don't work like that. (laughs) 
-hmm. it don't work like that. Like, and, uh, and I'm pointing this out because those are some of them, some of them are full of shit, but some of them are people that are legitimately about trying to do the work and they're legitimately afraid because they've seen one too many movies and they think that because they put up a post saying I stand with black people, they're on some government watch list. <laughs> That's not how that yeah. work. <laughs> nah, they take you off the watch list for that. And uh, they put that black square up, remember? They put up, all white people put that black square up. They, they I'm, telling you, watch this, bro. I'm telling you, but, I got harassed so much more when I was talking about conspiracies and I was uncovering these conspiracy theories that a lot of them have been have, have been coming out over the last few years. I was writing a blog called The Rabbit Hole. I swear. I told y'all about it. My car door was unlocked for a whole calendar year. I'm on a conference call with y'all. And then the next day, my door was locked. But then two days later, my car got ransacked. Then got cops coming from across the street of my house. So I'm like, hey, yo, don't worry about it. I'm, it's cool. I'm a cop. Plain clothes cops out here just hanging out on my block waiting for me to come out my house. Getting pulled over left and right talking about, uh, yo, we just wanted to make sure it was you. With my driver's license. And I'm like, huh? So, but once I started talking about black, black power, black nationalism, man, they have left me alone. Crazy Negroes, man. You need to get y'all mind right. They don't like y'all, so stop. Even though we know you're not gonna stop, but yeah. Yeah, this, this train is this train is left the station, bro. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, but, we're gonna have to let this. We're gonna have to let this era die off, yeah. and then hopefully, you from the ashes, the phoenix will rise. But this needs to this this thing needs to go. I'm tired of fighting Negroes to to help save Negroes to protect Negroes and Negroes are the ones bite my knees out. White folk ain't gotta do shit these days. We we in what did y'all say? We in autopilot at this point? Uh, yeah. Automaton, straight automaton, straight yeah. automaton. Even though even though history has shown us that when a group of people come together and strengthen themselves within themselves that they can achieve what they want to achieve rather than trying to attach themselves to the dominant to the group that has dominated them when y'all do when you when the group of people do what they need to do for themselves they get what they want they get what they need outside of that nope you're gonna stay on bottom mm -hmm. yeah black on people bottom. like being on bottom in more than one ways that's not good black. yep black people are bottoms <laughs> yep. it's like a turtle that keeps you know finding his way on the back on his back and laying on his shell you know what i'm saying it's like that you don't if you consistently find yourself in that position you get comfortable with it you will not move and you will lay there until you die and that's kind of where we are right now we're comfortable and i've often said that black people are so comfortable and to the point where the boiling frog, you know, thing, it was just silly. But the water, we're, we're in the pool and the water's being turned up. And we, we've become quite, quite okay with it. Like, mm, something smells good. What's cooking? It's you. It's like, it's like that, um, that video of that, that crab that ran yeah. right into the boiling water. Yeah, right into it. it. Man, it, you see it. Eating the corn. Yes. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, look at it. Get your mind right, man. Hey, <laughs> like they told you, hey, you still an N-word, you low IQ, they don't trust you. You they the white boys say, Y'all talk all that tough stuff. Y'all talk all that all that uh good stuff about white people and black and white people this, white people that. Then you go back when the camera's off, go back and do your N-word stuff. Mm -hmm. Still behaving like an N-word. They letting you know how they see you, how they feel about you. They don't respect you. They don't even respect your humanity. But you're still fighting for their crumbs. Mm -hmm. You had to hear it, so here it is. Get your medicine. The medicine never tastes good, but here it is. Mm. Hey, hey. So, Fat somebody, Life Station, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, somebody um, delivered this to Ben Crump. <laughs> <laughs> PC didn't deliver to him many times with many uh words he done messed up. So there it is. Man, yeah. He just summoned the spirit of being crump. 
<laughs> See, somebody called me. Somebody called. Somebody has called me. Some, who? Which one of y'all black people has called me? <laughs> All right, Joe. He gonna pull up. Pull up. Shit, ain't y'all in the same town? Pull up. <laughs> that was. Ain't gonna pull up. I, I know where he live too. <laughs> Everybody do. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, fatlifestation.com, two p.m. Make sure you tune in. You gonna go from this to this, so you gonna get the you gonna get the two meals in one, two hours, two meals in one. So make sure you do it. FetLifeStation.com, thepacks.org, thepacks.org, p-a-c-t-s.org. Make sure you check out the website so you can see collectively what we've done together. Of course, you know on the shoulders one.com. Check it out. Support, like, comment, subscribe, share, and hey, we gonna keep dropping these, dropping these, and dropping these on y'all forehead. So. We love y'all. Make sure y'all catch the next video coming up.